Hey now, Greg Fitzsimmons here, host of Fitz Dog Radio, your intrepid host. I'm worn out. It's been a crazy week. I can, I'm coming off a bunch of weeks on the road. I'm in town for Mother's Day. Uh, I don't know when you're hearing this, but I'm recording it on Friday, May 6th. And so Mother's Day is this weekend. I got big plans for the wife. I, uh, I'm going to get her some nice flowers, breakfast in bed. I'm bringing her out to uh, a brunch on Saturday and then a dinner with, with two other couples on Sunday. And I'm going to throw a move on her each of those days. And that is, uh, of course, her option. Because it's Mother's Day, you know, we're Catholic, so normally I throw a move. She has, she has no choice. She must go with said move. But on Mother's Day, she's allowed to politely decline. Um, yeah, we're going to have uh, a big bread. The Best Buddies throws an annual Mother's Day brunch at a big... One of the, one of the uh, supporters of Best Buddies is a mom who lives in a huge-ass sprawling mansion in Malibu. So they have like a nice little get-together. And uh, we'll go up to that. See who's there. Take a little walk on the beach. That'll be nice. And um, what else is going on? Uh, yeah, so this week was the it was the Netflix is a Joke Festival in Los Angeles. It's a big comedy festival. I think it's the first year, and they fucking blew it out. They went big. Like, so big, it was like... You know, fucking Julio Iglesias... Not Julio Iglesias. What's his name? Uh, Gabriel Iglesias... Did a show at Dodgers Stadium. I think he did two shows at Dodgers Stadium. And then you got uh, Mulaney did a couple shows at the Forum. Chappelle did like, as you know from the news, did like three or four shows at the Hollywood Bowl. That's 17,000 seats. Um, Just these big, crazy shows. Bill Bird did a big show. Um And then some smaller shows. I did some of the smaller ones in actual comedy clubs. I don't get the big venue comedy thing. I I don't know that it's enjoyable. Have I been to one? I saw Steve Martin as a kid. That was kind of a big deal. But that was like still, that was maybe 7,000 seats. But 20,000, is that enjoyable for the audience? I'm curious. Write me if you've seen these big shows and if you enjoy them. It just seems to lack the intimacy that comedy needs. That's that's my way of saying I can't draw big crowds. If you want to see Greg Fitzsimmons, I guarantee you intimacy. I guarantee you you're not going to be packed into a room shoulder to shoulder with some other people. No way. In my shows, you got a little elbow room. You want to kick your feet up in front of the chair in front of you? Might be empty. You want to take a little stroll in the back? You want to take a little stroll in the back couple rows of the club? Yeah, there's space. There's nobody back there. I keep it intimate. Um, we went to one of the events of Netflix as a joke, believe it or not, was Norm McDonald's Memorial. They, they sponsored it, which I guess means they paid for this. They, it was at the Henry Ford Theater, which is a beautiful theater. And they put up a lot of pictures and they put up, they, they gave everybody Norm's book. I don't know what else they did, but it was it was a first of all, it started funny because I got there and uh, and I get to the I get to the to the line to get in and I'm not making this up. Guess who's online in front of me and uh, no plan whatsoever. I see Mike Gibbons fumbling for his fucking vaccination card. And so I come up behind him and I grab him by the ass and start patting down his legs like I did at the TSA. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> he didn't even turn around. He just knew it was me. Uh, so we went in, and we it was a good hang. It was very moving. There was some beautiful speeches. Now, it was mostly funny stories. I mean, the, the common theme is Norm MacDonald is flaky. Norm would not show up. Norm would not call you back. Norm would borrow money from you and not pay you back. But he was such a character and such an enjoyable guy to be around that it didn't bother anybody. You just put up with it. That's kind of the quotient as human beings is how charming are you? Like, what can you get away with? And, you know, 
he was the the most charming fucking guy in the world. He was so in the moment. He was so present. And so this amazing turnout of people. Bill Murray was there, and um, David Spade, Sandler, uh, Molly Shannon, Colin Quinn. Everybody got up and spoke. And uh, well, Bill, Bill Murray didn't speak, but uh, and it was it was really nice, and it was a good hang afterwards. People, everybody had everybody has a great Norm Macdonald story. I was talking to this one woman who. Um, I can't remember how I met her, but I was like, so what do you do? How do you know Norm? And she says, I was his Pilates instructor for 10 years. And it's like, what? Norm McDonald went to Pilates? And so uh, I said, so what was that like? And she said, well, at first I thought he was a real asshole because I don't know celebrities. And so I didn't know who he was. And he was just very direct and he was very like... Uh, weird, and then I got to know him, and he became like my favorite person. And so she would do Pilates with him, and she had a little studio, and I guess they lived near each other. And he was walking, one day he was walking, and he had a baby carriage with uh, Mary Jo was the woman who was like Norm's right-hand person, who was like his assistant, was his producer, was his fucking soulmate on some levels. So she, he had Mary Jo's two dogs in a baby stroller. Don't ask. And he walks by the Pilates studio, and she's in the middle of teaching a class, and he just pushes the stroller into the middle of the class and it says, hey, can I borrow some money? And she's like, I'm in the middle of a class. And he's like, yeah, yeah, I know, but uh, uh, I want to go to Pinkberry, and I don't have any money. Can I borrow some money? And she's like, it's like, sure. So she lends him the money. Does he pay her back? No. He's, so a lot of funny stories. Um, Judd Apatow told some funny stories about he started out writing for uh, Roseanne Barr with Norm. That was like they each like were just starting out as writers and they were following her around writing stand-up for her. Um. Uh, whatever, I don't want to name drop. It was fun. It was star-studded. The whole week was star-studded. All these crazy shows. And Gibbons was at the show that Chappelle was attacked. I went to bed early that night. He asked me if I wanted to go, and I was like, nah, I'm going to fucking stay home. I'm, I'm, I just got off the road, and so I'm in bed. I'm like, lights out, and my phone starts buzzing. And I look at it, and it's like 10.45 p.m., and Gibbons is like, you're not going to believe this shit. Chappelle just got attacked at the Hollywood Bowl. And I thought he was kidding. Like, I thought it was a joke, so I just turned off my phone, and I went to sleep. And, he's, yeah, he saw the whole thing, and then he went to the after party. Well, listen to Sunday Papers, because I'm sure we're going to talk about it on Sunday Papers. But he's got some stories about going to the after party and stuff that happened there. Do any of you not listen to Sunday Papers, by the way? Is that possible at this point? After two years of doing Sunday papers that you'd listen to one and not the other? I'm curious. Uh, if not, you're missing a good fucking podcast every Sunday. I think this week's is going to be short because Gibbons has to go somewhere and I have to go. I have to go to this brunch. I have to finish it Saturday and then go to a brunch. All right, what else is going on? Um, I had lunch with Beth Hoops, who is uh, the head of, well, her and Chris Denman and a guy named John. They run a, this company, Midcoast Media, which produces the podcast and edits the podcast. And so Beth was in town for the, the comedy festival, and we had a very nice lunch together with her friend. And I showed them around Venice a little bit, which I always love to do. And I just got a kick out of hanging out with her. I have only good things to say about her, and that's mostly because she is editing this podcast and will fuck it up if I say anything nasty about her. No, she's wonderful. Love you, Beth. Um, what else did I do this week? Oh, uh, I want to talk about Roe v. Wade. Could we talk about that abortion is going to actually be illegal in an advanced first world country? That we're actually moving backwards in this fucking in a country where, in a recent poll, eighty percent of Americans believe that abortion should not be overturned. It is going to get overturned. What's wrong with this fucking system of government that we're in? And it's fucking crazy. And so people are just going to start cranking out babies. Well, poor people. Rich people will find a way. 
but there's going to be a lot of poor babies. Gonna, you remember how they used to be orphanages? And then I don't, I don't think there's many orphanages left because it seems like there's a demand for babies and there's never enough babies. But I think that there's going to be too many. We're going to have orphanages again. It'll be fun. They'll be picking a pocket or two and asking for more gruel, these kids. You'll see them. And I was curious about, like, um, because it seems like you always hear about famous people that, you know, like, grew up as orphans. And it's pretty staggering. Like, Holocaust survivors and orphans seem to become the most successful. So maybe this is good for the country. Um, Babe Ruth grew up in an orphanage, like, his whole life. Grew up in a fucking orphanage. Herman Melville. Edgar Allan Poe. How about Tiffany Haddish? Comedy's Tiffany Haddish. Louis Armstrong, Ray Charles, Ella Fitzgerald, Billy Holiday, yes, yes, Al Jolson, Charles Bronson, James Dean, uh, Clark Gable, Judy Garland, Gene Hackman, Oliver Hardy, Ice T, Ray Liotta, Marilyn Monroe grew up in foster care, Eddie Murphy spent some time in foster care, um, Andy Warhol. Orson Welles. So uh, who knows? This could be this could be great for the country. And, and you know, there's a shortage of workers because we stopped allowing uh, immigrants in this country. And they and there's you know fruit that's dying on the vine every year. So now, because we're we're gonna we're gonna let these kids get born, we can they they can replace the immigrants. So we'll just have orphanages and maybe locate them near agricultural areas, so we can put them right to work. Uh, Pierce Brodnan, Bros- uh, Steve Jobs, Cher. What are you kidding me? I want to be a fucking orphan. It seemed romantic. Do you remember being a kid and thinking it would be cool to live in an orphanage and have no parents and just be around other kids? Hmm. I don't think that's the truth. Um. All right. This is a... This is a Mother's Day overheard. I guess it's a Father's Day overheard. Obvious irony. I don't know if that's a man or a woman. I'm pretty sure it's a man. He writes in a lot. He's a big supporter of the show. He said, my son and his friend are 10. They are chatting and mucking around in the other room. Mucking? What does that mean? There is a pause and his friend says, quote, let's see how much of a beating I can take. That's jackass. See that? You let your kids watch jackass, and and that's what they do for fun. Let's see how much of a beating I can take. We used to do that when when we were kids. We played tackle basketball at lunch in 7th and 8th grade, where you would get the ball, and you would drive to the hoop, and you would try to get the shot off before you were tackled. And then we would uh, go sleigh riding, and we would go down this hill behind my house, and about seven or eight guys would stand along the edges of the trail that the sled went down. And as you went down on the sled, everybody would tackle you and dive at you head first. There's something about that dynamic as a boy getting beat up, getting beat into a gang. You enjoy it. See how tough you can be. Speaking of me being tough, I'm coming to Tacoma, baby. Tacoma Comedy Club, May 19th through 21. Irvine Improv, May 27th through the 29th. That's Memorial Day weekend. Bakersfield, California at The Well on June 11th. All tickets at fitzdog.com. Also, this podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp. I, uh, I had a rough day yesterday. Sometimes I get depressed and I just go down with it, which is what I'm learning to do uh, sometimes, which I suggest to you if you're feeling overwhelmed. Life can be overwhelming. You can get burned out. If you're feeling like you have no motivation, you're tired, you feel like helpless, uh, that's some some basic, uh, that's some burnout. And sometimes you got to give yourself a little time. How did I learn that? Because better help... I signed up with them two years ago. At the beginning of the pandemic, I signed up with BetterHelp. They gave me like a couple months free, and then I stayed on, and I pay it myself because I think it's an amazing service. Um, Sometimes I work too much, you know, between the stand-up, and then I come home, and I do all the podcasts, and 
um, I forget to give myself a break. And so in therapy, we talk about me carving out one day a week where I do nothing. And it helps me a lot. I do meditation. So, um, you know, BetterHelp Online Therapy helps you prioritize. And uh, in general, uh, it's just good for you to share your thoughts with somebody else um, and have somebody who's checking in on you. You know, it's a keep you accountable, somebody you can be honest with. And you can do it in person. You can do it online. Uh, there's many ways. You can do it over the phone. BetterHelp is customized online therapy that offers video, phone, even live chat sessions with your therapist. So you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. Much more affordable than in person. is much more affordable than in person therapy. You can be matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. Uh, Fitzdog Radio listeners get 10% off their first month at betterhelp.com slash Fitzdog. That's better, H E L P. Dot com slash Fitzdog. Get involved. You will thank me and yourself. You deserve it. Anyway, my guest today, oh, was she delightful? Came in yesterday. It's Willie Nelson's granddaughter, which is a fun, right out of the gate. I get that pitch, and I'm like, that sounds interesting. And then I listen to her album, and I'm fucking blown away. It is fun cool i'm not a huge country music fan there's some country music i love but it's not all for me but hers has like a real rock edge to it and uh they call it uh what do they call it um punk and billy punk and billy and her band is called the raylan nelson band their album is called don't and a great uh single called weed and whiskey she's got a podcast called music is funny and uh, Spin Magazine said, I've seen the future, and it's Willie Nelson's granddaughter. So she's she's got a lot of buzz on her. Um, she's so nice. She's so fucking cool. I had a blast talking to her. And then she asked me to do her podcast, which I'm going to do next week, which I'm really looking forward to. So uh, here it is. Here is my chat with the wonderful Ray Lynn Nelson. Uh, I'm sitting with uh, Raylan Nelson now, who is the um, the eponymous uh, lead of the Raylan Nelson band. Thank you. Which is so much. This this office for the last few weeks has been flush with Raylan really? music. Do you like it? For I real? love it. Were it's you blown away? <laughs> uh, it, it's just fun. It's yeah. fun as hell. Yeah, and you know, I realized today who it reminds you guys remind me of is uh, Cheryl Crow. Yeah. Yeah. Have you heard that before? I love that. I've heard a little bit, of, and I get it, because I love her music. Yeah. And it's so cute. And uh, All the I want to do is have some fun. That's like your credo, it seems like. I listened to that on the way here. Funny you said that. Are you serious? Yeah, because of Santa Monica Boulevard. Right. Yeah. Right. And we passed it and everything. It's pretty close, right? Because I yeah. feel like, we, yeah. Um, I love Sheryl Crow, and I love her sense of melody, too. Mm -hmm. You know, and I'm a melody girl. Yeah. I like... I feel like that's what I can bring to the table as a songwriter is uh -huh. I can come up with some pretty good melodies. Yeah. Uh, and then usually I just write songs based on what's going on around me mm. or something I've seen on TV or heard somebody talk about on a podcast or yeah. uh, stuff that's so going on in my life. write a song about me after this? Yeah. yeah. Really? I mean, seriously, because I, I just draw inspiration from what I hear, yeah. you know, and I think that's what we all do. Actually, yeah. even as comedians, you draw inspiration from other people's art and other people, what other people are doing sure. just to have something to talk about. Right. Yeah. So it's kind of the same thing. Um, like, like, our, did you hear the song brother yet? Our song How brother. It sing it? Um, he's coming after you, boy. He's coming after you. I don't remember. He ain't gonna stop until you're through. Well, it's a song I wrote about my brother, uh -huh. but it's also originally from a TV show I saw where this girl had a guy cheat on her and her three older brothers went after him. Oh, And I was like, wow. I don't think there's a country song about the brother going after the love interest. I love that. And it's so country, you know? So yeah, right. That's kind of how that one started. But most of them, and my brother is the guy who has a gun on his... Um, you know, on his waist walking around in Nashville just because you can do that there. And he thinks, I don't know, he's just that guy. So has he ever shot anybody? <coughs> no, not yet. Do you yet. think he will? Um, He would. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> he would. Because for some people, it really is just like they're showing it off. But then there's other people you look up and they go like, oh, yeah, you're you're just waiting. You're waiting for the opportunity. Yeah, I think every every redneck guy in Nashville might be just waiting, you know. Yeah. But there's rules you have to follow. You can't, you know, you can't just shoot someone. <laughs> you can't, but you, you saw have what to be happened. really mad at them. But too. did you see what happened with Chappelle last night? I did. I saw that too this morning. Did Are you, you see the video of the guy? The dude's all fucked up. His arm is backwards. Yeah, like Tom Segura's arm. And his basketball right. thing. Right. That's what it reminded me of. Right. And his yeah. fingers were all broken. His nose was broken. He had a big black eye. I mean, they went to town on this who, dude. Who all went after him, too? It was... I think it was mostly Jon Stewart. Uh, no, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> he was there. He was backstage. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, I mean, I it was... I mean, look, Chappelle travels with the posse. He's got a lot of tough dudes around him. And then he's also got, um, I don't know if uh, Donnell was, you know, Donnell, he mm -hmm. opens for him. I don't know if he was with him, but he's a pretty tough dude. He would have thrown some. But it, but <laughs> Chappelle actually goes, he goes, good, they're stomping him. So they were stomping him. Yeah. That's what happened to the arm. They were just jumping up and down on the dude. Are you scared to be? I got attacked on stage once, and um, it's just part of the job. You know, I mean, it's going to happen once in a while. I always feel like I got a microphone in my hand that weighs, you know, like three pounds and it's got a big mesh head on it, like a fucking Game of Thrones weapon. And uh, yeah, and I've got a lot of anger. So there's a part of me that wants it to happen again because <laughs> I would because then you can justifiably do it. Nobody I can't go to jail for beating right. somebody up with a microphone if they came on stage. Yeah, that's true. Have you ever been intimidated by somebody coming on stage? No. No. That you hasn't felt happened. Safe. Yeah, nobody's ever come up on the stage yeah. when I was singing or playing. And we ever throw anything? No. No. Yeah. No, nothing like that. Afterwards, someone told me that I wasn't good enough to be talking in between songs. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, woman. Yeah, and I you write jokes. You ain't got good words. Well, JB and I, the guy I do the podcast with, yeah. Music is Funny, which um, we're going to do with you next week, hopefully. Yeah, and great. Um, which is musicians talking to comedians yeah. about music and comedy. Uh, we love comedy so much that we write jokes to say in between the songs. Yeah. So I'm, and this was like six years ago, so I'm sure something just didn't quite, you know, you know how it is when you tell jokes and sometimes it just doesn't work. Sure. But luckily for me, Greg, I get to go, and a one, and a two, yeah, and, a, right, and right. just start a song, and yeah. everybody forgets about the bomb. They do. You know who, um, Amy Mann, you know Amy Mann? No. She is uh she's a singer. She's like a kind of folky pop singer. Cool. You would love her voice of an angel. Okay. I'll look her up. She did well listen to she did the soundtrack for um uh a Paul Thomas Anderson movie. I forget what it's called. I'll uh, I'll write it down. Cause you guys get a long drive back to Burbank after this. You yeah. can listen to it in the van. I will I'll listen to yeah. it. Yeah. Um but she uh used to bring comedian friends with her on the road mm -hmm. and instead of having to do the jokes in between she would have them pretend they were her and it was like guys girls whoever would get up and do the patter between songs or like roast her kind of no pretend they were her oh so like an impression no they would be themselves but from the point of view of the singer okay so they would basically go i hope you like that and that last song you know it reminds me of a road trip every reason and they do a bit and they, you know, Paul Thomas. That's a great idea. Yeah. Paul F. Tompkins and a bunch of really good comics would go on there. David Cross would do it. And uh, Now, yeah. have you ever toured with a musician? I was just asked by a thrasher metal band if I want to tour with them. Yeah. Which is famously the worst job in the right. world because these are guys that have swastikas on and shaved heads and they were in a mosh pit and you're going to go and my comedy is not yeah. uh <laughs> i know uh, yeah it's not aggressive i mean it, I, I don't know what it, my comedy is but it's not that <laughs> so i i'm thinking about doing it just to see how how bad it can be sometimes it can be so bad it's good yeah yeah i think you would do great in that audience yeah actually yeah Generation Just, Kill is the name of the band. Yeah. <laughs> is it really? Yeah. <laughs> but it's hard to, 
I mean, I know people used to do that a lot where they'd have comedians come on the road with them. Mm-hmm. But if when people are ready to listen to music and here's one guy telling jokes. Yep. You seem like you might get something thrown at you. I once opened for They Might Be Giants at uh, uh, Ohio State University and somebody, it was daytime and they had kegs and uh, and I'm doing my jokes and it's not going well. And then all of a sudden I just thud. I get hit in the chest and I look down at an apple. Somebody had like hurled an oh. apple at me. Oh and my I, God. And I just went, have a good day. <laughs> See you later. Checks are already in my pocket. Thanks for having me. Here How, about <laughs> <laughs> How about them apples? How about them apples? Right, all of a sudden I'm Matt Damon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, so it is it is weird, but do you, you go on uh, tour, do you guys go alone or usually meet up with other bands? Or yeah, I just meet work? up with the band, a local band in the area yeah. or something. We do right. one-offs now, and after the pandemic, it's gotten light. You know, travel's been light. Yeah. So just a couple of shows a month right now. Our next mm-hmm. one... Oh, I got your shows. I'm going to read them right now. You're going to be performing here in California yeah. at Harlow's in Sacramento on May 7th, which, um, you know. Have you I ever can, been to Sacramento? I love Sacramento. I'm sure there's a lot of country music fans there because it's, it's you know, agricultural area. I know they have, a, they have the big state fair there that's huge. They have tractor poles. They, yeah. they're, they're like real country people uh-huh. for California. You remember the show Eight is Enough? Sure. It was based in Sacramento. Oh, was it? Yeah. So that was my that's my version of Sacramento that I know. It's just reruns of Eight is Enough. You're kinda young to be watching. Yeah, Eight I was is watching Enough. reruns on really? the you know, like Nick at Night or whatever, the TBS okay. when they would play it during the day because I was homeschooled for a little bit. Uh huh. So I'd get my schoolwork done really early and then watch old shows like Gilligan's Island and Damn. Matlock. I've seen every show of Matlock at we were least just five talking times. About Matlock yesterday. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I was guessing who the killer because you can kind of figure out the pattern after a while, you know, like who uh-huh. the killer is. Sure. Murder she wrote. Same kind of thing. Murder she wrote. Yeah. Wow. Good times in TV. Yeah. Then. <laughs> they were. They were really. Um, the the actors were were really great, and it, mm-hmm. and and it was funny. Is back then it was kind of like looked down upon to be a TV actor. You, if you're a good actor, you did film Movies, or you did theater. Yeah. And now you look at the TV and like that's where the really great acting is happening. That's what you want. You want to be on TV yeah, now. Yeah, right. More Breaking than Bad and yeah. Sopranos and Game of Thrones. Like those are like the best actors in Hollywood. Yep. The what Did you see the Anna Delvey story? Yes. I just got sucked into that one. Watched yeah. the whole thing with my daughter. Yeah, they have some good stuff coming out. And um, the Dropout one. Saw the dropout, love that. Yeah. Um, uh, that woman was really good. And then they had uh, William Macy in that. William H. Yeah. Macy from Fargo. Yep. He's yeah. great. And Sha- he was on Shameless. Shameless was great. Have Shameless you seen that? Shameless was great. Shameless Just watching is... him do that bit. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And it's, as an Irish person, I just love that they were just, you know, the uh, the Gallagher's. Yes, they were just this uh, this out of control drunken Irish Catholic family, and uh, and th- I mean that was like proper binge watching. That's a show you can sit and watch four or five episodes yep. in a row and not feel bad about. Did you yourself. cry in the end? Of course, I did too. Yeah. Oh my god, I cried a lot. Yeah, because I- I'm a crier. First of all, are you a crier? Yes, especially around my period. <laughs> oh really? <laughs> yeah. Wow. That's when women cry mostly. Yeah. Tears of joy sometimes, right? Because uh, you're not pregnant. Yeah. Well, there's that. There's been yeah. those days too. Right. Of course. Right. Yeah. I'm smart enough now just to use protection every time. Yeah. You don't have to worry about it. Well, it's uh, <laughs> it's not done. It's now, well, now there's no abortion. There's not going to be any more abortions. So you use your protection, ladies. I know. I've heard about that. Yeah. It's going down. We'll have to leave our babies at the fire department. That's right. It, there's going to be orphanages again. Remember, yeah. orphanages were fun, right? Mm-hmm. Like in the Pippi Longstocking That's movies. That's right. <laughs> Oliver, you want more gruel? You got to ask for it. And Please, sometimes, uh, <laughs> Yeah. They might hit you for asking for more gruel. I don't even know what gruel is. It I sounds terrible. But apparently it was tasty. He wanted more. He wanted more. <laughs> but that Oliver, he needed Oliver. a beat, that kid. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you got to pick a pocket or two. two. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that was yeah. We need more. We need more orphanages. Yeah. Yeah. Apparently. 
I guess. But I feel like abortions have been happening ever since people have been getting pregnant. Like, come yeah, on. Right. You know? Right. Um, I mean, it's, it is weird when you look around, like, the world, how few countries have outlawed abortion. You know, you've got, like, the Muslim countries. Yeah. And uh, even Ireland just legalized abortion a few years ago. They were, like, one of the last holdouts. So we're moving backwards in some ways. Yeah, I don't know. Let's just hope that it's not real. Yeah. And it'll stop. It'll change. Let's hope so. Well, uh, there'll be enough uproar about it that it yeah. wouldn't, would never be able to go through. Well, statistically, you know, 80% of Americans don't want it overturned. But there's yeah. this appeal that they're making to certain groups that, that they want votes from. And it's not even like you look at... What are they trying to save our souls or something? Like, what are they yeah, doing? I know. Where, well, what is this based on? They, no, they just want votes. They want votes. It's the same way Donald Trump was standing there yeah. with the Bible. That's this guy's been like divorced politics. three times. He's, yeah. you know, sexually assaulted women, and somehow like the evangelicals all voted for him. It was crazy. Anyway, I don't want to get into politics because I know you just had Nick DiPaolo on your yeah, podcast. I know. <laughs> it was the first time we got into it. Oh my like, god! Because yeah, we don't do politics. I don't like the right or the left. I don't. Yeah care about either one i think right. it's so ugh, you know wait like, i want to talk about nick DiPaolo coming on your show though yeah he I, was hilarious i started with nick i think he's one of the funniest comedians in the country but he is opinionated is is an understatement i know and i i was like are we gonna edit some of this out to jb i said that and he was like <laughs> fuck no we're not and i was like okay i just don't want to get into politics i don't want it to yeah. be a political podcast but right. he was so funny with every delivery yeah if we took it out it wouldn't be a funny podcast yeah, anymore yeah. you know right right and um i do believe in free speech and everyone should be able to say what they want to yes. say you know yeah I think that we're, um, it's funny because it used to be the left that was a uh, pr- proponent of free speech, and now the left are the ones that are shutting it down. I know. We got to stop that. We got to cancel the cancel thing. Yep. And we just can't be afraid anymore. And mm-hmm. and just agree to stand by each other and give each other grace. I think that's what we have to I do. Like that. You know, yeah. just like I'm, I'm going to be your ally if something goes down because. Um, I actually went through a, a very tiny canceling situation in Nashville. It felt huge at the time, though. Oh, really? And, uh, it, and you know, like you really find out who your friends are. Yeah. You right, know? Right. Um, turns out I didn't have that many. So on a bigger scale, like when I've seen Ari go through it and I've yeah. seen, you know, Joe go through it. I've seen all these people go through it. And I'm like, man, I don't even care if it happens anymore. Those people are dumb. Like, yeah. To st- if you really knew these people, mm-hmm. you would know that their heart and their intention behind everything. And also, that was a t- you know, like it was a totally different time. And I'll tell you what happened. A, fr- a friend and I wrote a song that was called Looking Like a T-Word Blues. Looking Like a T-Word? Yeah, I don't even want to say it because that's why we got canceled. But it was the T-R-A-N-N. Oh, yeah. And it was just based on something that was going on with friends around us, you know? And had nothing to do with anything. Person was just like a story that we saw, and we thought it was funny. Yeah. And uh, it was right before Donald Trump got into office. And I think because he got into office, that's when all this woke canceling stuff started happening yeah. because people felt like they had to right. Right. stand up against it. But anyway, right. yeah, everyone in the LGBTQIASG community in Nashville just went after us. And how did you handle it? Was it was really hard. Um, I didn't eat for a week. I cried and cried mm-hmm. and felt terrible. And we yeah. apologized. And um, looking back on it now, and I, of course, I called my grandpa's publicist, asked her what we should do. And she's like, you shouldn't do anything. Just let it go. Mm-hmm. You know, they're not going to talk about it in a week, you know. And Yeah. But um, you apologized. I'll pr- yeah, we apologized because that is never my intention to hurt anyone right. by writing a silly, funny song. Right. Uh, and th- they did accept it. But then... It was um, the Nashville scene came out with Willie Nelson's granddaughter uh, apologizes for transphobic song. And I'm like, it's not a transphobic yeah. song, you know, and it's like, I don't know it. I hate even bringing it up now because I don't want to give it life. But I learned a lot from it. And um, I just give everyone grace because I feel like we're all just tr- winging it. Yeah. And we're all just trying to express ourselves in an artsy, fun way and whatever mm-hmm. it is. That's our passion, whether it yeah. be through comedy or music or art. And it's like you said, specific to what your life experience is. If something happens in your life and you want to play it out, it's like it's a little drawing or it's a short story or it's a painting. It's a moment and you're capturing it and you're putting it out. And people have to respect that you're seeing life from a totally different lens than anybody else. And that's why you're an artist. Yeah. And if they start saying, no, we all need to see it through the same lens. 
then, well, There's art is here to challenge that. We're here to challenge that. <clears throat> It'd be really boring. Yeah. It wouldn't be fun. Right. Yeah. And, and our differences and quirks and little ways we say things and do things is interesting. Yep. Why would you want to... Why would you want everyone to be the same? Right. I know. Unless they were all like me, then life would be, I think, a yeah, better place. Yeah, I do too. I, I mean, you've only that. known me for 12 minutes, but I think yeah. you get it. I feel like I know you more, though, because you know how when you listen to podcasts, you feel like you know them? Yeah, a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Do you listen to podcasts? No. No? Not at all? I listen to... <coughs> music? Uh, I listen to a lot of music. Okay. Yeah. Um, all different kinds of music. And country, actually, is funny because... Uh, as a kid, my father was into country right. music, and so I listened to your grandfather and 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 all the classics and Emmy Lou Harris and, um, but I rediscovered it recently. I think you know Chris Stapleton kind of like yeah. made me love it again, mm -hmm. and uh, and your and your music has made me very excited about country because you realize that I like country hyphenates. Mm -hmm. I like. Um, you know, Alison Krauss, which is oh, like, you know, yeah. yeah, like, uh, what do you call that? Not hillbilly music. What do you call it? Um, roots, mm -hmm. roots music. I like, um, car wheels on a gravel road. What's her name? Um, car wheels on a gravel road. Um, alt country. Anyway. Yeah. Is that Rosen Cash? I don't know. No, no. no. It's somebody's going to write in and correct me. Please write in and correct me and I'll send you a t-shirt. Um, and, uh, so yeah. And do you, oh, do you like Wheeler Walker Jr.? Yeah. He's funny. Isn't uh, he funny? He was supposed to be on the podcast. It didn't quite work out our scheduling, but oh, I have to okay. try to get him back on. He, uh, you know, it's so much fun <clears throat> to write funny songs because you know that people are going to laugh. Yeah. It's kind of one of those things where like, everybody's going to like this cause it's funny, Yeah, you know? So, um, I totally get that. I, I would like want to hear his serious stuff. Like what does he have in him that's serious? Well, that's the thing is he's got that one song that my friend who's good friends with him said to him because he was just on the podcast uh, a few weeks ago. And he goes, you know, you could have changed a couple words in that lead song. I forget what it's called, but he's like, it would have been a number one. one. He, he had a number one album for a while. Like he was up in the charts. Yeah. He blew up. But it would have been a legitimate crossover Grammy song if he had just changed a few well, he words. He just played the Ryman in nashville and he it was like records of the alcohol sold the oh, merch sold really he broke the records no kidding wow i know that was we, we yeah we were with him my friend who, who did the pod who does my podcast with me he flew down for that show really he went to it yeah well i, I clearly everyone there's big drinkers yeah. of course they are though right like that's yeah. the of course you want to get together and drink with your friends and listen to silly country music and sing along like i my friend was sending me videos from it and like the whole crowd and this was the new album they that's already the were singing all the words yeah that's the dream as a musician is for everyone to sing your or a songwriter it's yeah. for everyone to sing your song yeah screaming it yeah. weed and whiskey yeah i get i get close with that one yeah. usually it's cover songs that i get people singing uh, okay back. Yeah. yeah who do you like to cover uh, we always start off with Bad Reputation by mm -hmm. Joan Jett. Yeah. And I met her once in Nashville. She's teeny tiny. Really? And she's super cool. Uh -huh. Yeah. And I told her that I start every show with her song. So now I feel like I have to continue to start yeah. off every show with her song <laughs> since I told her. Yeah. And uh, we like to cover my grandpa's stuff, of course. Uh -huh. So we do I Can Get Off On You, the Papa Willie and Waylon tune. Okay. And we done on the road again and bloody mary morning is a good one for my band because it's kind of a rock band yeah and uh we do the grundy county auction do you remember that song by john michael montgomery in 1995 how's it go it's like um well i went down to the grundy county auction she's an eight she's a nine she's a ten i know she got ruby red lips fun hair blue eyes and i'm about to bid my heart goodbye no i like it nothing i like it uh, what about, do you remember, this is a new one I want to cover. Do you remember, uh, wait down yonder on the Chattahoochee, never yeah, of knew course. how much a muddy water meant. Yeah, I want to yeah. do, see, there's, it's fun to pull out songs like that, or like, uh, when you drink, don't drive, do the watermelon crawl. Like mm -hmm. some of those 90s country ones, yeah. you can rock them up a little bit, and everybody yeah. knows the words. Right. And you can throw that in with your originals that people don't really know. And Yeah. You know what I mean? People seem, because 
when I do a show, I'm not like, let's put on a show for you. It's more like, let's hang out. Yeah. I'm telling you jokes. I'm telling you, uh, you know, why we wrote the song or whatever. But it's usually like a joke when I pretend to talk about why we wrote the song. Yeah. Um, it's just like, I don't want to take things too seriously. It is fun. You know, like we're in the business of being fun. Like Cowboy Jack Clement said, you know, like we're supposed to have fun. Let's not take this so seriously. That is funny when people describe... Like Bruce Springsteen, who's my f- favorite. He's great. He's, he's my favorite yeah. singer, uh, songwriter. And uh, But sometimes at his concerts, he will go on about why he wrote the song and how he wrote the song, and you're just going, just sing the song. We don't care. Like a little bit can go a long way. But you know who's great between songs is Elvis Costello. He's yeah. truly funny. He's like a stand-up comic up mm-hmm. there. And that used to be a thing, you know, on the Opry yeah. Dolly Porter, all of them would tell jokes in between mm-hmm. their songs. Yeah. It was part of, like, it was expected just right. to keep the show going, yeah. you know? Johnny uh, Cash, he's said yes. a lot of cool stuff, yeah. Uh, have you ever read any of his books? No. They're great. Really? Yeah, Johnny Cash's book. Yeah. Are they memoirs or are they fiction? Uh, no, bi- uh, biographies or yeah. autobiographies. Yeah. Where he wrote it, right? Yeah. Autobiography, did I get that yeah. right? My brain switched it up. Well, I don't know the difference between an autobiography and a memoir. I th- I feel like memoir. I feel like short. a mem- Well, I feel like a memoir. You're allowed to play with the facts a little bit more. Oh, uh, okay. Autobiography is more official. Like it has to be corroborated. You usually co-write it with like a like a journalist. Yeah, ghostwriter. Yeah, and a memoir is more like like almost like here's my journal from the '80s. Right. Yeah. This is like the story of his life. I feel like it was more autobiography style. Uh huh. Yeah, and he lost his brother when he was little. Oh. And uh, it, he talks about that, and I really connect. I lost my dad when I was little, and like he just talks about being on the school bus, wanting to talk about his brother with his friends. Yeah. And they were like, "Stop talking about it," but he just wanted. He just missed him and wanted yeah. to talk about him, and I related to that and. I don't know. He just gets, and he's also really funny in it. That wasn't a funny part. I'm sorry. I just remembered the heavy part, but um, anyway, it's a good one. Also, Dolly's book's great. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. she's awesome, and she she just got inducted into the Hall of Fame today. Yeah, she didn't want to be in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Yeah, she originally <laughs> like pulled out of it, and she goes, "No, I don't want you nominating me." And then somebody convinced her to 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 let them do it, and then sure enough, she she goes, "I'll go in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame after I write a rock and roll song." Yeah, she's like, "Maybe I'll do it. Sounds fun." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love her so much. Have you ever met her? Um, when I was little, but I don't. It wasn't memorable to me yeah. at all. Uh-huh. But uh, she, I feel like she's the female Papa Willie, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Everybody loves Dolly. She could do no wrong, mm-hmm. and she can walk around Nashville because she she has wigs, you know. So she's her hair's uh, might be a little darker than mine naturally. Oh yeah. So she all that's blonde wig, uh-huh. and so she'll walk around Nashville with her, you know, her and her husband just walk around. And nobody bothers them. Oh. I don't know that a whole lot of people. Well, I don't know. She's Dolly. I bet people would bother her, but Nashville locals wouldn't bother them. Yeah. And did you grow up in Nashville? Mm-hmm. Born so, and raised. So what's it like? What's the vibe there now? Because it seems like there's a lot of Californians showing up. And I've heard that That's there's the like vibe. bumper stickers saying, go back to California. Yeah. Yeah. And I, yeah, it's just an influx of L.A. people mm. to Nashville. The traffic matches the traffic here now. We oh. didn't used to have that. We could get anywhere in 20 minutes, you know. Yeah. And now, no. Yeah. N- not one time of the day can you do that. Uh but yeah, lots of fun comedians came to are coming through town a lot more, so that's fun. Theo Vaughn is there, right? Yes, haven't been able to get him on the podcast yet. Haven't I think Nate Bergazzi is mm-hmm. there. Yeah, he's hilarious. Yeah, he's really funny. And he grew up there. Yep. <clears throat> and uh, there's another. Josh guy. Wolf was there, oh, yeah, but then Josh he Wolf. moved to Vegas. Oh, he did. Yeah. Oh. And he didn't tell anybody. They didn't tell anyone. They were just like. By the way, tomorrow we're moving to Vegas. Oh wow! <laughs> we're like, oh okay. Uh, well, comics have realized during the pandemic that they don't have to be in L.A. and New York anymore. You can go you know, anywhere you want. A bunch of people went to Austin, and I just talked to, I just had dinner with, um, you know, Duncan Trussell? Yeah, he's been on the podcast. Oh, he has? Yeah, I Well, he's him. he's moving, I, I don't know if I'm allowed to say this, I think I can say this, he's moving to Austin. Yeah? From North Carolina. Okay. Yeah. And uh, he was going to come back to L.A., but he's like, I couldn't afford a house. Like, a- everything here just goes, li- and I know Nashville's, Nashville's the same way, way, right? Yeah. Yeah, even I bought a house um, on the outskirts of town. How long ago? Uh, 
in 2020. Mm-hmm. I owned a house before that. I bought a house in like 2006 or something and more in Davidson County, like the, in, not in Nashville. It was in a little town called Goodlettsville, but, uh, but during the pandemic I was running low on cash. So I was making money on the, <laughs> on the house, you know? So uh-huh. I sold the house and just moved like 12 minutes away yeah and uh i get so since like when you buy a house recently they'll send you market stuff on what's going on and around your house every month yeah and my house has gone up like two hundred thousand dollars in value since i bought it in 2020 wow it's i don't it doesn't make any sense why the market is the way it is in nashville and i feel like it's just going to come crashing to a burn Yeah, because it doesn't make any sense how an 800 square right. my house isn't, but an 800 square foot house in town is worth more than my my 2,000 square foot house mm-hmm. outside of town. Like that stuff doesn't make sense to me, you yeah. know. And it's kind of like that here in LA, right? Yeah, it's become like I bought my house 20 years ago, thank God, and that's been like you know it's the house that I'll die in. You think? Yeah, I, you've I, been trying to make money on it. That's what's weird about it is I get realtors. I, one just called me before you got here. I somehow my number got in the hands of realtors, yeah. and they call up and they go, "Hey, you looking to sell your house?" I'm like, "Hey, you looking to go fuck yourself?" <laughs> and it's leave me alone. And so like, I, I don't know where I moved to. I live in Venice Beach. I'm surrounded by close oh, friends. Fun- All my neighbors are really good friends with each other and that's all you want i mean yeah. I, I think community family and community is everything. everything i agree obviously the weather's great here too we're a mile from the beach where where am i gonna go how do i upgrade from that i'm always cold in california it's true that annoys me there's a cold breeze all, all the, time. the time and i like humidity we have zero humidity out here everybody always talks about the weather being so great in california yeah. and it is always sunny yeah it seems like so that's nice but it's always cold as soon as you step into the shade you get chilled yep yeah you don't know how to pack you know it's- no it's hard to pack you got to go hoodie and if you're a chick uggs work really nicely yeah what do you wear? 2003 i'm wearing i'm wearing my california boots i okay. bought them just for this trip let me see they're from uh, um, they're from Steven Tyler's Steven Madden. Oh yeah. Very cool. Yeah. They're my California boots. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for noticing. Yeah. Well, I, uh, <laughs> I appreciate a good boot, but you definitely have to do layers, tank top, then a t-shirt, then a jacket and a hoodie and a, and a wool hat and a hat. Yeah. Always wear a hat. Always you wear always a wear a hat too. Is it a part of your identity hat. or are you just covering up the hair? It's well. There's there's no hair to cover. I'm covering. <laughs> I'm covering that. If I'm in the sun, then I took a walk this morning. I took yeah. like a hour and forty five minute walk this morning. You got to cover it up. And I got to cover it up. And then, um, and then also, yeah, like it regulates my temperature a little bit. Is that your meditation walking? No, my meditation is meditation. You do meditation? Yeah. Okay. Good. Good. Me and too. I notice you do yoga. Yes. I saw that in your home page. You had some. I'm yeah. opening a studio in Nashville, no, too. No! Yes. Really? Yeah, me and a couple friends from wow. yoga. Have you ever taught classes? Yeah. I've been teaching for about a year now. No shit. Mm-hmm. Damn. And um, we're, we're thinking, well, we actually did it. We got a business license, so we're calling it Stardust Yoga. Mm-hmm. So kind of a little bit after my grandpa's album and song Stardust, and of course, we're all made from Stardust. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I want to put affirmations all over the wall and, what you know. What kind of affirmations? Like, uh, you're lovely, you know, mm-hmm. you're a badass, you mm-hmm. know, trust me, it's okay. You know, mm-hmm. everything's fine. And if not, it's okay. You know, just stuff like that. I think that, um, when people come to yoga and first of all, going to a yoga class is way better than doing yoga at home. Right. Oh, hell yeah. Cause it's, and <laughs> unless you do it, you can't explain it to anyone, but it, y- you feel the energy of everyone and you're like, you're not in competition with them, but you want to do well because everyone else is trying to do well. Right. You know what I mean? And you feel at the end of the class like you could walk up and hug anybody. Yes. you just went through this kind of spiritual thing together. It is so spiritual, and I love that about it. Yeah. Because I don't like churchy Christian stuff, but it feels close. You know, this is something I can connect with. It mm-hmm. actually brought me back to Jesus, yoga did, because I feel like he was the ultimate yogi, even though he might not have done asanas, you know, the actual poses. Mm-hmm. But they, he might have. But... You know, I feel like everything they they teach ethically in yoga is what Jesus was saying, you know. Right. And so it, it kind of brought me back to, like, accepting Jesus again because I went through this whole, like, 
shun I didn't shun the church, but I just didn't like it anymore. Took Being in break. the Bible Belt, yeah, yeah, the Bible Belt kind of. Well, ev- you were raised. I, I think I read that you only listened to church music growing up. My mom would only let me listen to old country and Christian music. Yeah, yeah. So that's a lot. Yeah, and uh, grew up in the church. Kind of drank the Kool Aid of all those stuff, and it was a non-denominational church they were speaking in tongues and they were they were like people shaking and dancing around Did and you ever I was on the dance to speak team in, in tongues I remember this lady I was probably like 6 or 7 years old and she's praying over me to speak tongues and she was just going you know and I'm just like you know uh, and God bless her. <laughs> <laughs> but was there a part of you that went, all right, I should do should it Should I now. try it? Should I try it? Of course I did. Of course. Yeah. I was a kid. Oh, you, you know? did I do thought, it? Yeah. I was like, I'm like, oh, you know, I was just yeah. like trying to do it. It wasn't the spirit, you uh-huh. know, it was just me trying to do whatever they were doing. Right. Uh, and so, and I don't know, like nothing, stuff didn't make sense. Like where they were like, uh, trust God, but fear God. Mm-hmm. And if you ask questions, they're just like, you know, no. That is because I grew up. I grew up very Irish Catholic, and that that fear thing really was the thing that that drove me away from it. Also, it was like because I had genuine love. I have genuine love for Jesus Christ and yes. for God, but I have no connection to the church any longer. No. And what's left is I think because I got sober and you know twelve step stuff, kind of like the God thing was already in there for me. A lot of people try to get sober and they get hung up on the first step because they can't, or the second step, because they can't get the, the God thing. They can't wrap their head around it. And mm-hmm. I was like, oh no, I already got that. That's done. Yeah. I talked to that guy. I call God great spirit. That's mm-hmm. a Native American thing. It's mm-hmm. something I can connect, feel better saying after going through all that stuff at the church. And you just, I saw a lot of hypocrisy. Two of the pastors of the church had had affairs. Mm-hmm. Um, one of them moved out here and is now transgender, you know, like now a woman and good for her. Yeah. Does porn now, but it's just like, <laughs> really? Yes. I'm not, I'm not kidding. I'm not making, you wow. can't make this shit up, <clears throat> but you know, it was just like such a drastic difference of who they really are versus what yeah. they pretended to be. Um, and I could just go on and on about it, all the people that are so hypocritical and I just don't want to be seen as a hypocrite. So I'd never tell people I went to church cause that's, yeah. I believe in truth, you know, mm-hmm. and um, not lying and nonviolence and, um, you know, acceptance of everyone and all of the good things that they pretend to be, you mm-hmm. know? Yeah. And there's just so much drama in it and gossip in churches. Oh, mm. yeah. Yeah. Well, it's a way of saying, I mean, it, one of the like most, most basic human dynamics is there's us and there's them and <laughs> church can go instead of it real church real spirituality jesus is there is no them it's mm-hmm. just us mm-hmm. and then you get into church and they go oh no 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 because they don't the, the, their cross is different on the wall and what they say over the wine is different than what we say over the wine so that's them and we're us and it's like well then you're off on the wrong foot already we were in a church that would uh, bounce around a different places and rent from other churches really and we actually rented from like a hindu church but we would go through before the church and hang up sh- like pillowcases over the <laughs> kali <laughs> satchels <laughs> all over the whole building we would cover them up oh. before service oh. just i don't know and instead it's just of a, like becoming it's just an, a piece of art that to them represents what they pray to you know yeah. like what it looks like um, what does God look like to you? Like, seriously, if you had to put, like, when you're talking to him, what are you picturing? Uh, the color blue. Really? Yeah. Cobalt or sky blue? Sky blue. Okay. I think I'm seeing him in the sky and I'm seeing, I'm seeing God, you know, maybe because it was drilled into me that he was a man. Like I see, I see a man and, uh, it's, it's like, uh, it's an handsome? energy. Now, I don't think I see it that that specifically. Okay. I see it as an energy. I feel it. Like, I feel God. Like, I I still get on my knees and pray sometimes for people. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like that's how prayer works is when you're praying for other people. Mm. So if there's something that you want, pray it for someone else, especially if it's someone you don't like. Oh, you know? I like that. Yeah. And 
I, I've learned that with yoga too. Like I, th- I feel like when you pray, it should only be thank you, grateful. Mm-hmm. If there's something you're wanting for yourself, pray it for someone else. Mm. You know, and if you really want that thing for yourself, pray it for someone you hate and don't like. You know, pray for them to have w- success and yeah. wealth and health and happiness or whatever it is that, you know, or a, an A on their report card or mm-hmm. whatever it is that you're praying, what's going on in your right. life, you know? Right. But it took a long time for me to figure that one out. Yeah. I, I, I can see that because you, I think the energy that really destroys you is when you uh, compare yourself to other people and you resent other people's success. That, that is so crippling. And it's, it's something that you hear all the time. Tiffany Haddish just said it in an email. There was this email chain that went around and people were, it was a bunch of comedians and people were being nasty. And Tiffany Haddish said something really profound about that, about, you know, um, comparing and and bad mouthing and how if you look at your own career it's probably not where you want it to be because you're probably doing that projecting and yeah yeah so uh good and for there's her. enough room for all of us to be successful yeah i think so i think it, especially now with the internet and um you know social media like that can be a positive thing it can be a place where i like i see the amount of comedians take nate bergazzi moving a moving uh uh to tennessee and like he just goes on the road he does his podcast from there yeah and he does his social media and then his people show up to see him anybody can develop there's this article i read years ago called 1000 true fans if you can get a thousand people to believe in you enough to buy your album, yeah. to buy a ticket to your show when you come to their town, you can make You're a successful. very nice living. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. I think because my grandpa is Willie Nelson, I I view success as, as fame and wealth mm-hmm. as big as he is. But uh, yeah, I mean, really, if you just had a thousand fans, sure. that would buy everything. Yeah. Because that's 10 times a thousand is... Well, if you get 10, them to buy, if they buy a ticket for twenty bucks and they buy your premium membership to your podcast or your pay, you have a Patreon, yeah. right? So say they spend fifty bucks a year on your Patreon, and uh, they buy a concert ticket for twenty, and then they download your album for ten, and all of a sudden that's a hundred thousand yeah. dollars. you know, you can live off that in Tennessee. Yes. I mean, and what what more do we need other than what we need? That's it. That's all you need. We just want to be able to go play. And yep. Yeah. We just want to we want to have a barbecue with the people we love. Yeah. There's no better moment than the sun is set and you're at a picnic table Outside, yeah. and people are making each other laugh and there's the you, money's not going to buy a better, you know, feeling than that. No. This yeah. all sounds really corny, but it's like, you know, uh I've been doing this for 32 years and I've seen a lot of people get famous. You know, I've had a lot of friends like I started out with Joe Rogan. We were like roommates starting out and Bill Burr and all these guys that are playing huge theaters. And and I just go, I don't want that. No, I crawl my way to the middle. I'm staying right here. I can't get canceled. Nobody. Get, I'm not I think big I heard enough to you talk canceled. about this the other day. How you're saying that you were like, I don't want to be big. I yeah. want to be. I'm at the perfect, perfect level. level right here. I go out on the road and uh, I play a club. I can fill it up. What are you gonna do if, when it happens? What fe- when you're fe- huge? I think I've actively dissuaded people from. Like, by virtue of me saying this, people are going to go, oh, all right, well, I'm not going to follow that guy. I think it's going to do the opposite. (laughs) (laughs) I think it's going to be the opposite. And just around the corner, you are now selling out arenas. So what what do you think? How will life change for you in that way? Well, I definitely leave my wife. Yeah. (laughs) I get rid of my fuel-efficient car. Tell sell my, my Venice Beach house. Yeah, tell my kids to lose my number. Now, I, what would change? I think I would. Um, I think I would just rest easier because I I don't sleep at night sometimes when I think about the big things. Like r- like right now, I pay my family's health insurance every month, and that's twenty eight hundred bucks a month. Yeah, and I think about that going to bed at night. Like holy <laughs> shit, that's like my my first forty grand a year is just down the tubes that's before fucking mortgage and i think about that stuff and i think if i if i could if i had just uh just a couple million dollars more 
that I could just go, all right, sleep well. You're good. Your kids are going to inherit some money. I want my kids to inherit a little bit of money. Not a ton. Yeah. I don't want them to be spoiled, but I want them to have enough where they can put a down payment on a house and, yeah, and you know, nice. mm-hmm. send their kids to college, whatever. Yeah. So uh, I don't think I don't think it would change. I don't think I would so change. You just houses. sleep better. I would just sleep a little bit better. Would you travel nicer? I'd fly first class. Sometimes yeah. I, the only time I fly first class now is when I get automatic upgrades because I have points and stuff. Yeah. But I would buy the first class ticket every time. It's so now. much better up there. Yeah. You fly in first class? I've only done it once. Yeah. And it was one of those things, you know, where you just happen to be able to get up there. But yeah. Yeah. I was the flight yesterday from here, the first <laughs> the first flight, the lady next to me was I had headphones in. Yeah. I had headphones in and she just kept still kept talking and uh, I'd pull it out, you know. Oh yeah. And uh, she was like, what's your name? You know, I told her my name. And then because I had an instrument and because I told her my name was Raylan Nelson, she was like, are you kin to Willie Nelson? And I'm like, yeah. Oh, no and kidding. I should have just said I taught yoga yeah, and didn't even yeah. say I was a musician. I just happened to have a ukulele with me or whatever. Mm-hmm. But so the whole time, her and her sister next to her were just chatting it up about Papa Willie, which is cool and everything. It's just. It's a conversation you've had. A lot. They've never had it. You have. Oh, yeah. So there's not much in it for you. And when people want to take pictures of Willie Nelson's grand, like, she's like, let me take your picture. I'm like, but I'm not Willie Nelson. Yeah. Nobody's going to care about right, this, right, you know? Right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, How would it change for you when you when you get successful? Because according to Spin Magazine, um, there was an article that just came out about yeah. you in Spin Magazine, which was very nice. And the... The oh, gentleman nice. there said, I have seen the future, and it's Willie Nelson's granddaughter. And um, and this is a guy who's been a writer for a lot of years. He's very respected. And it's and it's it's actually a, uh, an homage to a quote that John Landau said about Bruce Springsteen. He said, I've seen the future of rock and roll, and it's Bruce Springsteen. Yeah. And you know what happened next. So um, how, um, how do things change for you? He wrote the, a similar article about my grandpa before my grandpa got famous. No kid. Oh, he's that. He's been around that long. Yes. Wow. It was like a year or two before, and it was kind of the same article where it was like, you guys got to pay attention to this uh-huh. guy, Willie Nelson. Yeah. And the next year, which was 73, I believe, is when my grandpa made it big. He was 42 when he made it big. Oh, no kidding. Isn't that cool? Wow. I think, yeah, you don't realize that. But yeah, he was in his 40s when he made it. Damn. Yeah, he he worked a long time trying to get to who he is. And, and was just, he just on the road that whole time? Yes. Going from town to town with a leather bag, just... Yep. Wow. Exactly that. And playing for whoever would let him play with them. Ray Pry- He played in Ray Price's band for mm-hmm. a while. Um, it's neat. And Jody Payne played uh, guitar with him for a really long time. He's no longer with us, but he was the rhythm guitar player in Papa Willie's band for... 30 years or something but before papa willie made it jody was doing really well in nashville Uh and he would let papa willie play with him so when papa willie made it he let jody play with him and jody play with them until he died oh that's nice isn't that neat yeah my grand there's lots of cool stories about my grandpa like that he really is yeah he really is the most like jesus that i that walks the earth but uh-huh. i know i'm biased because he's my grandpa yeah. i've just heard so many stories he's always for the underdog mm-hmm. always yeah uh if people are talking shit he says something really kind and profound like you were just talking about with tiffany hat you just something really profound where you're like Ooh, now we feel bad for talking shit yeah you know yeah he's just for everyone right. everybody on the right loves him everybody on the left loves him that's true you don't Rednecks, think of him as hippies. affiliated with either party no yeah and he's Basically, just like, get out and vote. Just use your mm-hmm. voice. Yeah. You know? Right. He loves everyone. He really does. Mm-hmm. And he chose, he's taught that, you know, don't be an asshole. Mm-hmm. And his uh, number one rule, don't be an asshole. Number two is don't be an asshole. And number three is don't be a fucking <laughs> asshole. <laughs> <laughs> and my kids, when they were real little, yeah. they knew the rules. They That's were, don't be an asshole. That's cute. Yeah. Um, your kids, you homeschool? Well, they do school at, online at home, but yeah. yeah, I did teach them up until they got into middle school and high school. Well, 
my high school really my daughter's um in sixth grade and the boys are in ninth grade so you talked to them until you realized yeah. that you didn't know the shit anymore. i just didn't want to anymore <laughs> and <laughs> so we found a great program online that they do and okay. they just log in and luckily for me they were kind of like me i was i was only homeschooled for about three years mm-hmm. and they've been homeschooled most of their lives it just works better for our lifestyle you know yeah. uh and they want to do it, but they uh, get up early, do their school. Well, my boys do. They're almost 15. They're twins. Uh-huh. So they'll get up, they'll do their school, play piano, do their workout, and then they just want to play video games and hang out with their friends, you know? So they just nice. get it done early. What's their workout? Uh, so they'll, like, go ride bikes or they'll um, take the dog for a walk or they'll do... So there's, like, and a they time also period. Do these pun- <laughs> that their dad taught them some sort of thing to do every day, like a... I want them to do yoga, right? So yeah. I'm like, do planks, you know? Uh-huh. If you don't want to do push-ups and burpees, you know, they're doing that, this whole set that their dad taught them. But, uh, yeah, I try to get them to do yoga because yeah. I think everyone should do it. But we all connect with things. No, but yoga should be, you should do whatever sport you do plus yoga. Yes. Because it, it lengthens your muscles. Lubricates it's, your joints. Yep. Everything. And it's core. It's all that core yes. stuff. It's all anybody talks about. Yeah. And then you're working with your own body weight. So, mm-hmm. you know. And I always feel like a badass. Even if I don't do too well in a really hard yoga class, I always feel like a badass yeah. when I'm done because I've tried and my body feels great. Yeah. Yeah. Have you done hot yoga much? Yeah, we do that. We just, it just means you turn the heat on. Yeah. Yeah. With heaters. Right. Um, I, I, I try not to turn it on too hot these days because people just been fainting these days. Yeah. <laughs> so I try not to turn it on too hot. But, uh-huh. uh, but yeah. It's I hot. got a friend who started hot yoga years ago, and he goes, he goes six days a week, all the time. That's impressive. First thing in the morning, he's like at a six a.m. hot yoga class. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I can't get up and go early. I'm not an early that early bird of a no. person. I like a nine a.m. yoga class. Mm, that sounds about right. Yeah. Well, you got to set your kids up. You got to get them fed and set yeah. up for school, and then you can go off and do your thing. Yeah, six thirty is way too early. Yeah. Wow. Um, so I wanted to ask you also about, um, your, uh, I have these questions I ask every guest, but they're usually comedians. I mostly have comedians on. Okay. And once in a while I make an exception when it's somebody that seems like they have a sense of humor. I don't care if somebody's hysterically funny, but people either get comedy or they don't. Right. And obviously you got a podcast that's called, uh, Fun music is funny. Yeah, we could have gone with a better title, but it seemed right at the time. Well, you haven't done that many. You could change it, right? We could. What do you think we should call? <laughs> Can you come up with something clever? Um, country comedy, con- country and comedy. Country comedy. Uh, hee haw. Why don't yeah. you just call it Hee Haw? I wonder if there is a Hee Haw podcast yet. Would they think it was about Hee Haw, though? Good. <laughs> Make it exactly like Hee Haw. Just have like people popping out of bushes, Nobody saying one-liners. Nobody laughs like Hee Haw anymore. Nobody oh goes, Hee Haw. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody does that anymore. <laughs> it sounds like a mule. That's not a real person. Hee Haw. <laughs> what was that? Uh, it's a Wonderful Life. Sam? Yeah. Hee Haw, Sam? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he that's the last hands. person who did it. Yeah. Hee Haw. Yeah. Um... That is always, and then there's tee hee. Some people do oh, yeah. kind of say tee hee. Yeah, tee hee. <laughs> <laughs> do you remember Mary Poppins when the guy sings all the ways people laugh? No, I don't remember that. Oh, I'll send you a clip later. Okay, it's good. Um, all right. I want to ask you. These are the questions okay. I ask my comedian friends. Um, how would you do in prison? I would just do a lot of yoga, and I try. I would just try to teach everyone yoga maybe yeah they would love you you think you'd become like a guru to them okay because women here's the thing my mom used to work in a women's prison and she said that most of these women find their true selves in there because they've been dominated by their fathers and their abusive husbands and most of them are in there because they were like helping their fucking boyfriends sell drugs yeah. you know they were it's it was, it's always the man's fault it's very rarely you know a woman's in there because she killed a guy but the guy was you know beating her <laughs> right, or whatever right so they go into women's prison and they have all kinds of great programs well she worked in a really cool women's prison in bedford it's pretty famous for launching programs for women 
and uh, they do do yoga and they take classes and they I bet have, they love it and they love it and they they come out and they're like different people. I was gonna go and play for the Tennessee women's prison, but then COVID hit. I need to reach back out to her because I wonder if they would let us come in now and do a show for them. Yeah, because uh, we were planning on doing that right when co- I'm glad we talked about this because mm. I haven't thought about that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And also why is the first thing I think about being in prison? Some, you think about a hot curling iron, them sticking that in your vagina. Mm. Why have we heard those stories? And I hadn't ca- heard that one. Can you have a curling iron in prison even? Um, yeah, I think so because you can have a hot pot for your cup of soup. So I think you'd have a curling iron. Yeah. See, I, that's what I go to. The first thing when you're like, how would you do in prison? I was like, I just don't want a curling iron, a hot curling iron. Yeah. So I'd probably end up letting them just have sex with me or something. Right. These women. Yeah. Right, right, So right. I wouldn't have to deal with that. Yeah. I, I think that um, the the makeshift tools in a prison are probably pretty scary. Yeah. So just say yes to everything. Just say yes to everything. Yeah. Um, maybe, maybe if you say yes to it in a certain way, they would be turned off. Like if you're too into it. Maybe they they go like, hey, no, I'm more into like forcing myself on people. I don't like it when you come That's on to the me. That's the strategy. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Go in and hit on everyone. Yeah. Y'all want to fuck? <laughs> if I was gonna suck a guy's dick in prison, I would do it so hard that nobody would ever. That's ask what me you do. Again. They'd be like, that guy's <laughs> too into it. <laughs> it's like he's hungry. It's like he's <laughs> drawing strength from it or something. I don't want that. So hard. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, that's how you do it. <laughs> that's, sorry, guys. This is the only way. I got one speed. It's high. <laughs> All right, here's the next one. Uh, what did you learn about yourself during the pandemic? Oh, that I can get depressed easily if I don't just get up and do something. No. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Did you is go that- through that? Yeah, but I didn't. I didn't. Didn't make me do, do anything. I, I still. I just got depressed. I just stayed down. I just watched really? a lot of uh, watched a lot of Netflix. And I was nice. It was nice that my my son's in college, so he came home from college because of it. So we got to spend more time with him. We did a lot of good stuff together. But I realized that I am capable of doing very little. Yeah. 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 So I'm not like you. I I realize like no, I can just go down. I can just slip into sad mode and do very little and get yeah. through it. But Hibernate. I was, I can see how people just stay in bed and get sad and cry. If, yeah. And after two days, I was like, oh, now I see how people do that. I don't want to be that person. I don't want to be depressed in bed all the time. You know. So I was just created projects to do around the house that didn't even need to be done. Really. Also moved. You know. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh. Let's pack up, you know? Right, right. So then I was doing that. and you start doing more yoga? Yes. That's yeah. when I started. The December of 2019, I went... Do you know who Todd Snyder is? No. Are you a Todd Snyder fan? He's a folk singer. His big hit was Beer Run. And um, he works in com- funny stories with his stuff, too. But uh, I opened for him on the road in December of 2019, a two-week run. So I was on the robe kind of by myself it was just solo me and uh me and the ukulele and i went out and found yoga places because i didn't have much to do yeah and realized i wanted to just keep doing it so when i got home i found a place to go real close and then started going wow and that's and then i just took teacher training from them because it was still during the pandemic and i was like i just want to know everything about yoga and then by the end of it i was like well i could teach it you know yeah have you do you feel like you have a, a healthy addiction to it now like, do you need to do it? Yes. Yeah. Yes. I stretch every day. Mm-hmm. You know, even if it's not a yoga class, but right. like we were talking about, it's always better with a class. Yep. And it's, and when I teach a class, I'm, I'm watching everyone and make sure everyone's safe, but I like to do it with the class. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it demonstrates what we're supposed to be doing. And then also I like to do it with everyone, yeah. you know, kind of like the same way with the show. I want to just play and have fun with, you know what I mean? I want to hang out with everyone. I don't want to just like tell everyone what to do in a yeah. yoga class. Right. Right. Um, but yeah, I and t- teaching a class and doing it with someone is different than going and taking a class from an instructor because mm-hmm. you just you know how it is you uh, you numb everything out and just listen to what they're telling you to do and focus on activating your muscles or whatever. Right. It's just yoga is the best. I could talk about it forever. Yeah, nice. When you meditate, do you just stop thinking about everything, or do you think about the breath in? Yeah, well, in I out do the a nose? mantra. I do TM, so it's okay. a mantra. Okay. I have my mantra, and my my mantra is uh, more money, more money, more money. 
Yeah. No. no? <laughs> well, who who do you hate? Who do I hate? Yeah. Who's the person you hate? You don't have to say it out loud, but think of them in your head, and then the next time you're saying money, 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 think about them getting money, 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 and then you're gonna have so much money. Mm. Test my they theory. They have. They Test have a theory. lot of money. It's okay. Let them have more. Oh, okay. All right, I'm going to try it. I Why like not? that. Yeah, that's a great idea. <laughs> um, all right, what have you turned down recently? I turned down a reality TV show. You did? Yes. What was it? Oh, it was so stupid. Do you really want to hear it? it? They had this great idea where it was Big Brother style, so they would put uh, relatives of famous people in a house. Uh-huh. None of us knew who each other were related to, and we were supposed to do challenges uh, and have clues to try to figure out who each other were related to. Uh-huh. Would you watch that show? Uh, yeah, but only for like one or two episodes, though. I don't, I don't see that having like a ten episode arc. No, and they were not paying very well at all. Yeah, well, because they know that if it blows up, then you suddenly have a big social media following, and you're a celebrity, and then you go make your money. Yeah, somewhere well, else. so they don't pay. They don't pay on these reality shows mm-hmm. and those. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good pass. That's yeah. a good pass. Um, all right. Bef- I could talk to you all day. You're absolutely uh, lovely. You're such a same. nice person. Same. Yeah. And I'm going to do your podcast next week, so yes. we'll get to hang out more. Good. But the album, the most recent album is called Don't. Right at, right before the pandemic. I feel like when I release albums, it starts pandemic, so I'm just going <laughs> to do singles now. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, I guys. like that. You just do singles. Yeah, I did That's... that for a long time. And then people in the business were like, do, you know, do an album, do an album, do uh-huh. an album. We do it pandemic. We couldn't even tour on it. Yeah. So please go check it out because it, it did not get enough light. All right. You know, and I love those songs. Yeah. And with a single, I feel like you could give each song a lot more life. Right. You know? Right. And you're not sick of it. You play it. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, if you, if you do to come up with an album, you have to promote that album nonstop for like a year. Yeah. As opposed to just like hyper pushing one song that you're into at the time. Yeah, for just a couple months and then you have another song. Yeah. And you can even do like a t shirt with a single or something. You uh, know, just like okay. give it a lot of for your Patreon. Yeah, members. yeah. Raylan Patreon dot com slash Raylan Nelson band. Which is spelled R A E L Y N Nelson. That's y- the Southern way. But don't go to RaylanNelson.com. I just found out that somebody has jacked it from me. And oh, no. It's an escort site now. No. Yeah. Are you serious? I'm serious. So go to RaylanNelsonBand.com for all the tour dates and stuff. Not RaylanNelson.com unless you want to. If you, you want to prostitute. Support these women. Yes. yes. Do they all look like you? Uh, no, but they're hot. <laughs> It's beautiful tits oh God, on that that's page. That's so funny. John Reap is the one who told me I did his podcast. And he was like, are you aware what happens when you go to RaylanNelson.com? And I was like, no. Well, you know, I thought I had it forwarded to Raylan Nelson Band, but somebody's jacked it from me. And- also, don't just go to Raylan because there's a pop singer named Raylan. Yeah. She, her name is Rachel Lynette, and they made her name Raylan. Oh, My name is actually cool. Raylan. That's not any shade thrown her way. I'm just saying. Have we listened to her music? Mm-hmm. Pray that she writes uh, great songs. She had a song called um, "Tailgate." Don't tell on me. Don't tell on me. Tailgate. Let's pray for her. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of money for Raylan. <laughs> also, um, the music is funny. Podcast. You can go to the website Raylan's. RaylanNelsonBand.com and you'll find uh, ways to get on Patreon. You can look at pictures, listen to music. You can uh, watch videos. Lots of fun stuff on the website. Come see her. She's coming your way. As we said, May 7th in Sacramento. May 21st in Hamilton, Ohio. Uh, June 11th in South Pittsburgh, Tennessee. Uh, Hershey, PA on June 15th, June 17th at the Bowery. Oh, the Bowery in New York. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. That'll be fun. And then New Hampshire, Washington State. Go to go to the website and get your tickets. You can get the tickets there? Yeah, I think so. They're all, they have ticket links in there, I think. Okay, good. 
All right. Thanks, Greg. You're nice. All right. Appreciate thank you. you. Yeah. Thanks for making it down here. Good luck getting back to Burbank. Thank you. And then I will tell you, um, I was going to give you an, an album to listen to. Oh, yeah. I'm going to give you Man, two. Man. Anim- or Amy, Amy Man. Man. Amy Man. And then I'm, I'm, I'm pulling my hair out, what's left of it, of the... Uh, of the car wheels on a gravel road. Oh, yeah. Wait, I'm looking it up right now. Car. Lucinda Williams. Oh, I love Lucinda, Lucinda Williams. Lucinda Williams. Yes, she's great. Yeah. Okay. She's the best. Say a prayer for her. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs>